Hello, uh, I am Surya Subedi. I am professor of international law and the author of the study guide on international law of the sea. It has, as you know, four sections dealing with the different aspects of the law of the sea. Uh, today, I am going to talk about very briefly what I cover in section B of the study guide. Section B is designed to uh, cover an analysis of the laws on baselines, territorial sea and a contiguous zone. The, how the baselines are drawn is very important in demarcating the outer limits of the territorial sea, exclusive economic zone and so on and so forth, other maritime zones. Therefore, the law on baselines is very important in establishing the nature and scope of other maritime zones within the law of the sea. The study guide begins with the rules on draw, drawing baselines under which conditions the basic rule of drawing baselines is of course straight lines following the natural configuration of the coastline that has been the law for a long time. But in exceptional circumstances where the coast has a peculiar characteristics, then states can depart or derogate from the law on straight baselines, um, uh, 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 the baselines and then draw a straight line to enclose the areas which would have been a part of territorial sea or international waters as internal waters. So, the method of drawing baselines departing from the line following the natural configuration of the coast and drawing straight baselines was made possible thanks to the judgment of the International Court of Justice in the Anglo-Norwegian fisheries case and so on and so forth. Then the provisions, the pronouncements made by the International Court of Justice were incorporated sometimes even verbatim in the 1958 conventions, Geneva conventions on the territorial sea. Then when the time came to negotiate the 1982 convention on the law of the sea, it expanded on the laws relating to the method of drawing baselines. There are different methods prescribed for drawing baselines when you have a bay, historical bay, number of other special geographical characteristics have been taken into account in formulating the rules relating to the drawing of baselines. That is what I examine in this study guide. Then I move on to examine the nature of the principle of the right of innocent passage. In the territorial seas of states, 12 miles that is now accepted limit, within that 12 miles of maritime belt, maritime zone, what rights do other states have to navigate? What do you mean by innocent passage? When a passage is innocent and when a passage is not innocent, there are detailed rules. Uh, in the 1982 convention on the law of the sea and there are controversies with regard to the use of the territorial sea by warships, ships carrying nuclear weapons or nuclear powered or nuclear propelled vessels. If the weapons are not mounted, if the passage is to traverse from point A to B without meaning to intimidate or threat pose any threat to the sovereignty and a territorial integrity of the coastal state, then even warships, nuclear ships, nuclear powered ships or nuclear war weapon carrying ships are entitled to the right of innocent passage. These are the um, areas where there is some controversy and uh, the provisions of the 1982 convention on the law of the sea has been examined in some detail uh, in the study guide. It goes on to examine 
the notion of contiguous zone, another maritime belt uh, beyond the 12 mile territorial sea, which is basically a maritime belt designed to enable the coastal state to implement its laws with regard to uh, the safety uh, or the um, uh, uh, proper implementation of the provisions relating to the territorial sea to do with immigration for instance, to do with uh, the regulation of sea lanes. Although the vessels of other states have a right of innocent passage, the coastal states may very well prescribe a certain sea lane. Foreign vessels have to conduct their passage along those sea lanes. So, to make sure territorial sea is part of state sovereignty, not full sovereignty, but with the exception of one provision, the right of innovation passage, other states have, but with the exception of the right of innovation passage is a part of the state territory. It is a water column, but part of state sovereignty extends to the territorial sea. In order to protect the interests of coastal states within that territory, where limited sovereignty applies, you needed an additional belt, maritime belt, another 12 miles of contiguous zone. So, this study guide, guide goes on to analyze the notion, the evolution of contiguous zone and the, what are the rights and duties of coastal states in the contiguous zone, what are the rights and duties of non-coastal states, other states in the contiguous zone. So, these are the areas which I have covered in section B of the study guide on international law of the sea. Thank you.